Hey friends, I'm Whitney, this is Whiskey and Wit, and in today's video I've got another wood build for you. We built these two matching console tables to go next to our fireplace in our family room to match the side tables we just made, so stick around to see how we made them. The supplies list is pretty simple, it's a 2x4, two 1x4s, two and a 1x10. So the first step is to take the 1x10 and cut it into two pieces 35 and a half inches long each. Now we're making two tables, so we're doubling everything, but I will explain throughout my voiceovers how to make one table. Next up is to take your two by fours. You're gonna wanna cut two pieces at nine and a quarter inches, and then we did two pieces at 35 inches. That piece is going to dictate how tall or short your console table is. We wanted them to be a little bit higher so that Finn couldn't grab things off of them. The original Anna White plans that we went off of suggested 23 inches. I will link those down below, but when we measured it out, that seemed pretty short for the area we wanted them, so we increased the length. So then it was time to cut the one by fours. So you'll need four pieces at nine and a quarter inches, and then four pieces at 37 inches. Now you're gonna want to wait to cut the 37 inch piece until you can confirm that that's exactly the size that you want. So I took my one by 10 as well as two pieces that were the nine and a quarter, added some wood glue and used my nail gun to hook them flush with the ends of the one by 10. And then I laid it down and measured end to end to confirm indeed 37 inches was what I needed. Sometimes you could get a 16th and eighth of an inch off. And so we wanted to make sure that that was flush. Also, think about your cuts before you start. We did not evenly space them, and so I had to run to the store and get another one by four. So learn from our mistake and make sure that you plan it out a little bit better than we did before you start cutting. If you do it right, you can get it on the two one by fours. And then after sanding any rough edges, went through, added some Gorilla Wood glue and nailed it down so I had two identical boxes. And these are gonna act as the top and bottom of your console table. The next cut that you'll wanna make is to take the remaining pieces of two by four and cut eight pieces that are five and a half inches long, long end to long end. And what I mean by that is you are cutting these shapes for your 45 degree angles. So what we did is cut a 45 degree angle on the piece of wood, measure from the long end five and a half inches, and then cut the other angle. Now an easy way to continue to do this is after you cut one piece, flip it over, measure five and a half inches, and then continue with the flipping. That will help you get the alternating angles and Alex was able to crank these out pretty quickly. Here's what your pieces will look like when they are cut. So each of those 45 degree angles will fit nicely onto your table. Then I chose to stain at this point in the process just because it was a lot easier to do than trying to get in some of those angles. And I used Minwax's aged barrel. We use these on the coordinating side tables and they match our pergo flooring really nicely. So I went through and stained all of the pieces, the two boxes, the legs, the smaller two by fours for the braces, and the little five and a half inch pieces for the 45 degree decorative pieces. I also took this chance to seal all of my pieces just because with the tables, we put them together and then sealed. And with the 45s, we got some polycrylic in the edges and it was just kind of a pain. So we knew that we would be able to seal and it would be no problem at that point in the process. So then once everything dried overnight, it was time to assemble. So Alex started by using one of those nine and a quarter pieces of two by four and lining up the long piece as well as the 45 and just nailing it in. This helped us get everything set in the right spot for him then to screw the piece in for stability. Once those pieces were nailed down, then he took two cabinet screws and went through the top of that two by four to make sure that everything was secure and repeated that again for the second leg. 
Then grab both of those legs and get them centered onto essentially what is the bottom of the table so that you can screw it in. So to do this, we put the two two by fours from those legs on the ground and then lined up the box, flipped it over so the open part of the box was facing up. And then Alex went through with some more cabinet screws. You can use whatever long screws you want, but this is gonna make sure that your table is nice and solid. Also by screwing up from the bottom, you're not gonna see those screws when you go to display your table because the trim will cover it. And we did two screws per side for the impact driver. Then we flipped it over, grabbed the other box and laid it on top and it fit pretty snug, which was great. You're gonna have a little bit of a gap on the top, but that's okay because you will be able to see your angles a lot better. Once it sits where you want it to, we just went through with the brad nailer and hooked it just because people aren't gonna be sitting on this. As long as it's hooked in with a good amount of nails, you're fine. If you feel you need it structurally, you can add some additional screws, but we didn't feel the need to do that. The brad nails will suffice. So then the last step is to just take the remaining 45s and nail them to the bottom of the table as well as the legs. Now to finish it off, I just grabbed some of these corner braces, two inch from Home Depot. You I used the screws it came with and hooked them on to all eight corners of the table. I think it adds just a little bit of character to it and it gives a little bit of contrast to the table. We did these for our side tables as well, so we thought that would also help them look like a matching set. We installed both of these next to our fireplace. It was kind of a match made in heaven when I saw that the width of the table was gonna fit perfectly in each of these spots. I've been struggling for the past few years on what to put next to our fireplace and these turned out super great. They match our floor really well. We have pergo flooring from Home Depot so that aged barrel color really coordinates well. I love the height of the table so little hands cannot get up and grab anything. They're sturdy so they don't wobble and also the 45 degree angles give it a little bit of character as well. Like I mentioned before, these tables match our side tables that we made in a recent video for our living room. So I will link that video down below if you are interested in making a matching set like we did. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to let me know down in the comments if you are enjoying these wood builds. I think our next project is going to be in our master bedroom. We've got plans to build a really nice wood bed, some nightstands, and some other things that will be coming your way. So be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss that future content, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Are you walking? Are you walking? To everybody that asks, how do you keep fun out of your decor? The answer is, I don't. <laughs>